Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome to my class. I welcome online audience, in-person audience, which is very huge. You can see it, but it's a lot of people here. It's crowded. Uh, <laughs> and today the topic is pawns. So we're going to be talking about pawns, why they are powerful. So before we start with this game, actually, let me just go here. Because all I want to ask you is why pawns are important. What are the roles in the chess game? So I'm going to give you some time and just start talking what makes pawns powerful or important. Yep. Yeah, you there. <laughs> Very good. So they control squares. What else do they do? Become yep, they can promote. That's very important. Yep. Because when we want to study pawns, we really need to like remember or understand all the aspects, all the dimensions that where they can play a role. So it's good kind of to you know slow down at the beginning and just acknowledge all that. So control squares, promote. What else? Do I have to refresh chat or just no one is saying anything? I'm going to have to give you a new link. OK. That's the only way to do it as manual. Oops. It's OK. So what else are pawns doing? Thank you. Awesome. So hello, Rob, Webster, Dmitry, James, Ariane. Oh, I remember some names from previous time. Awesome. So what, what makes Pawn powerful? All right. So let's see. Uh, they are the souls of chess. Oh, wow. That's very philosophical. So how, how do they exhibit, or I don't know how to say that, but maybe more practical thing, but yeah, maybe soul of chess is great. OK, Pawn structure can be. Uh, the pawns are the structure in our army. Okay, but again, a little bit more specific if we can go. Pawns determine the way you play. Mm, okay, I kind of have an idea which way, which way you want to go, but I want you to be more specific, like controlling squares or promoting. What else can they do? As offensive tool to gain control of files and ranks. Yes, very good. So, uh, like to maybe control files so how do we control files with the pawn though so maybe just open up space for like pieces to uh maybe control files or ranks pawn chain pointing somewhere you might want to attack there okay very good so pawns can be very strong in a pawn chain what else i'm not gonna let you go that easily there are still so many things pawns do we didn't name Just try to imagine some kind of pawn structure. Um, pawns are spinning downward. I don't know what that means. Triple pawns are an effective way to control a file, but there are downsides. Yep. If we have pawns in advance, we could have more space for our pieces. Very good. So gaining space. So pawns allow us to gain space because the more we push them, the more space they're going to control. But also behind them, we suddenly have more space for our pieces. Very good point, Angel. And if you have inferior structure, you got to be aggressive. So yeah, if pawns can like make maybe our position like very like crunched, that we, we can be uncomfortable. What about some offensive, yeah? Or any, anything, sorry. That was mm -hmm. So they can kind of determine the way uh, we had with our position. So let's say we have knights. We may choose with pawns to kind of close the pawn structure. So again, they control some squares and the knights can go there. 
I also think about poems as you know a very cheap force or labor to like break in somewhere because like sacrificing a pawn like on the king's side you know like playing f6 as white or like like here f6 and breaking like the pawn structure or sometimes like h6 just giving up that pawn to open up stuff is very important you can like you can almost like exploit the fact that there are suits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can help create a weakness, like trade pawns, and suddenly the pawn is a weakness. Mm -hmm. Yep, it determines whether bishop is bad or good. Pawns are also very good kind of defensive force. You know, like these pawns, when we castle there, the king is very safe, right? So you see that pawns can be very good attacking forces, like kind of for defense, for gaining space, for controlling important squares. Um, for like pawns can easily like sometimes we have a pawn here and like let's say um, bishop and queen there like sometimes we can easily clear a diagonal with pawns awesome so keeping all that in mind today I prepare a few positions where we're gonna focus on how we play with pawns so let's move on now to this first game why to play here this is a very nice instructive game about how to be playing with pawns so take your time first to kind of evaluate what is happening here. This looks like a very typical Rui Lopez structure. What to do here? So black just played c5 and it's white's turn. Okay, some idea with knight f5, knight f1, I assume this one, the typical kind of maneuver. So we see that after c5, there is kind of a lot of tension, right? All these pawns are looking at each other. So we can maybe ignore it and like just move back. But I would be careful because when you no, you can do that because you can, yep, we are not losing anything. So any ideas what to play here, how to continue? Um, okay, we have d5 suggestion. Yeah, that's the five thing. So why d5? Mm -hmm. uh, yep, so in Rui Lopez, we very often like to close the center, especially make this bishop really bad. And then potentially we have this knight jumping there or some other stuff, but like these pieces could be looking at the kind of king side and attack there. Potentially, we also are very happy that after d5, uh, black cannot easily like push because this knight is under attack, it's pinned. So d5 is a good move here to play immediately, but that did not happen in the game. In the game, white first took here, black took, and then white decided to, uh, to close the position. So what happened next was black played knight a4. The idea is to attack kind of the pawn, but also get away from this so we can play c4. Now white play this really important move, c4. So white is stopping black from move, moving there and then you know potentially reshuffling the knight there or developing bishop to c5 by keeping the pawn on c5 and kind of blocking, um, blocking this pawn there. So c5, c4, b4. Okay, so we have closed center, really nice pawns here. This bishop is not great. Um, I think white has a very comfortable position. This pawn also in the future can be very dangerous for promotion. 
But how do we continue? What to do now? What did Karpov choose to play here? And I would like you to think about like two or three moves, just to have some options what we can do here. So you all online, if you can just write two or three move candidates that you think are moves that are logical. You may choose later to play completely different move, that's, that's fine. But just right now, what are moves that seem, you know, kind of logical, natural to play in such position? I can kick it off with like queen c2. Mm -hmm. That seems logical because this move is probably coming, so queen c2, okay, we just move it first. Mm -hmm. All right, what else? a3 idea with queen a2, okay, good idea, Nick. Connor wants to immediately crush the center with f4. Mm -hmm. James knight f5, I mean, all those moves make sense. What else, knight f3, queen b3, and knight f1, yep, also, uh, I mean, I understand that you want to bring the king towards the center, I also understand the knight f1 is kind of a logical, um, not logical, but very often like a maneuver you do in this position, I'm not sure where exactly though you are going with this knight, because both these squares are taken, but it's a move that, you know, like we consider. Knight b3, okay. Bishop c2. So what about here? Any other ideas? I mean, a lot of moves were said already. Yeah, the, the moves I was thinking are associated with the one group. Okay. okay. So I think like queen c2 for me makes a lot of sense, knight f5. And I also like your f4 ideas. But, you know, what is really important to kind of think in chess is, and especially what grandmasters do like Karpov, they don't rush with things. So if you are happy with your pawn structure and you know you want to attack on the king side, you prepare things. So Karpov played move that was not mentioned yet. Knight e2, okay, maybe preparing f4, good idea. And also stopping this knight after this going here did not happen. What is a good preparatory move for this position? Okay, I'll give five more seconds. Go for it quickly. You want to make a guess? Queen A1 suggested, okay. Yes. Shailesh is getting the trophy. Rook F1. You are so close. <laughs> Rook F1. So we do want to go with F4, but we are preparing it because obviously if the F file opens, we want to have the Rook there. And this Rook uh, is just not that like helpful. And I know a lot of you are suggesting like Knight B3 or even like A3 and this and that, but I don't think White wants to play on the Queen side right now. White really wants to focus on the king side. So rook f1 happened. Black played queen c7. White started f4. Now, capturing out f4 is really, really problematic because it opens up the bishop. And if you want it to be like, okay, I'm gonna trade it now, the problem is that now this knight is gonna jump here. And this queen is trouble, we may be threatening knight take h6. Um, and if you go somewhere like, uh, let's say queen d8, so you are still defending the knight and there is no knight take h6 tactics, I may just go, I think, what, like queen b3 there, there. Then just think about, yeah, I think, I think that's what I would do. 
And the problem is that just these pawns are going to come and going to go there and just going to be very, very dangerous. So just capturing the pawn seems a little tricky. So what black decided was knight d7. So black is getting ready that if white takes, black is going to capture with the knight, keeping kind of the blockade here. And with this knight on e5, I think black is kind of surviving and being happy. The bishop is still controlling those pawns, so black is secured. But obviously, as white, we don't want to capture right now. When black is prepared for the capture, we are not going to do that. So white played queen c2, improving the queen, knight c3, and now white decided to close it. f5. So f5, um, we may think about like pushing f6 at some moment. We are just like threatening, but. Honestly, when I saw this game, I didn't understand much what is happening. But after you see the whole game, then you kind of see, you know, it's like Steve Jobs says, right? You connect the dots looking, for, looking backward. So the same thing. Like, it doesn't have to make too much sense for you now. But I recommend maybe looking at this game after this session again, because then you will understand every single move. And that's what it's about, like, when you are studying from, like, strong grandmasters like Karpov, because you may not get the idea immediately, but then everything kind of connects and makes a really nice picture. So f5, knight f6. But this is the moment I want you to think. Because for me, this move is like, it may not be too hard to find. Actually, I showed this to this like one kid recently, and he suggested it pretty fast. But I think it's like strategic move, what to do here for white. So again, like look at this. Don't be just like throwing uh, moves. But think about what makes sense. And think about three moves again. Two, three moves. And then zoom in on one of them. Oh, thank you, Edwin. OK, knight h1, that's very creative. What's the idea? Knight b1. You know, Kasparov has like a rule, like he always says, uh, I think it was Kasparov, like, Nikakda kanyom nazad, like, never go backwards with your knight. <laughs> I think we are kind of breaking it here, but I understand your moves, uh, the idea behind those moves, and I think they are good. I just want you to spell out those ideas. So, knight h1, in order to go to g5. How do you get the knight there? OK, so someone is suggesting this way. OK, by the way, I'm super happy that move candidates are coming. OK, I see a lot of you are see seeing that move that I was very, uh, very kind of impressed by. Oh, OK, so with the pawn there. Got it. So knight h1 with maybe pushing the pawn. Good idea. I think we will have like a small twist to that. OK, g4. OK, so maybe this. Yep, that makes sense. What Karpov decided to play here is the move that many of you suggested. Super cool, knight e2. So basically, in this position, I'll tell you what I think that Kasper, uh, Karpov thought. So he wants to move this pawn forward. Because if we get pawn to g5, it's just much easier to like break in. Maybe we can have even h4 there to support the, the break. So that's one thing. We want this pawn to go forward. And we are not to worry about opening up our king. Because look at these pieces here. Like they're just out of the picture. Even actually this rook. Maybe even, like actually all of the black pieces are like, we don't care if there are like two open files. Because just these pieces can never take part in any attack. And secondly, this is the only really active piece that's actually kind of annoying, right, if we are white. This knight can sometimes make some kind of fork here. It's attacking there. Maybe sometimes sacrificing with pushing. Just this knight is the only piece that's like semi-dangerous. So after knight e2, we just want to trade it. And we want to allow this, this pawn to fulfill its potential. OK, so knight e2, knight takes, bishop takes. Bishop d6, obviously just developing. 
and no time to waste, G4, going for it. Okay, most of this game is really interesting to be looking from the white's perspective. This is the only situation that I'm going to flip the board. Here we go, magic. And I want you to think what to play for black. Because white's plan is very simple. Here, here, and just checkmate you. I don't even know if maybe with the queen there somehow or improving the knight. Sorry, knight. The mouse is so fast here. Like, good luck with that. So, what are you going to do if you are black here? Are you just going to wait for a slow death? Are you going to be like, you know, crazy just sacking something to survive? Or, or is there a third option? Wing, wing. <laughs> Okay, so you would like to play maybe like a5 here and try to push? Yeah. That could be, but I think at the end of the day, maybe if you are really lucky in life, you're going to push here and not lose a pawn. But I'm not sure if you're going to actually get like a, like something called counterplay. But I see this, that James and Nick, you guys are on fire. King f8. Like... You know, if you are so much in danger on the king side, you just run out. You run away like as quickly as possible. And then if you, ha sorry, I don't know why I'm doing it. If you happen to get your king, for example, here, suddenly you are happy with these pieces like defending you, having actually strong pawn structure and you are surviving. So there are a lot of like games, I think for white, when you like attack and suddenly you move the king to the queen side. Uh, but in this situation, it's like a really nice, resourceful man maneuver to just get the king out, get the king out of, of the G file. Yeah, I think it was Petrosian. Yeah, I'm not very good with like history and memory. So I will, I will take you up on that, Ariane. All right, so king f8 happened. I'm going to flip it back because we are really interested what to do with white here. Okay, king f8, really smart escape. We are going h4. Here, going again. Takes, takes. 97. What about now? I think this is like a critical position that is the hardest to play for like club players because we are so happy about our pawns that they are like, you know, we gain so much space. The pawns are like, we are obviously better but sometimes we kind of over push. Or sometimes we are just get too optimistic about our position. So what to play now if you are white? Bishop h5, okay, good suggestion. What else? So like improving the bishop. King g2, maybe like getting ready to move the rooks there. f6, king f, okay, great. I'll give you a little more time and everyone to write their ideas. Try to like commit to something, you know, write down. So like, okay, yeah, this is what I would play in the game. Because I think, you know, when you consume kind of any videos, chess content, and you don't force yourself to make decisions, um, you are just not going to actually see that improvement in your chess too much because you're a little bit too passive. So try to like commit. Okay, I would play this and then we're going to talk about whether it's good or not. Copy black and run with the king also. So let's start with move f6. 
So F6 is a move that obviously if we have an option to push and if there is a checkmate, we want to do that. The thing is that here, you know, yes, you're kind of attacking the king, but now you're also opening the file. And whereas before it was like, you know, the pieces couldn't get there. Now this rook can get there. So if you go here, um, like if you take, I think you may like, Right, I'm just gonna knight f3, I guess you can do, but then maybe I can run again and still enjoy this pin. So obviously you don't have to recapture with f after f6, maybe you can play something else here, but I feel like you're suddenly like, you know, these pawns are amazing. They, they got you, you know, control over, let me see here, control over all these squares. And that's not it. They also got you this space for all these other pieces, you know, that you can use. That's the power of the pawns because they push forward and the black cannot get to kind of these squares anywhere. So like I like the idea of, for example, King G2, just to be happy with the pawns. You know, they are good as they are. They don't have to prove anything else. So far they are awesome. And then maybe figuring out how to improve other pieces because these pawns cleared this file. So maybe now is the time for the rook to improve. What else? Bishop to a4. That could be, but something with the bishop happened. Actually, Karpov decided to play bishop g4. You wanted to say it, right? So you see? More, I don't know, courage or something, because you see those moves. Uh, bishop g4. So we are improving, you know, the bishop. We got the space, the pawn moved, so we can get the bishop here. And now f6. Maybe it's a different story, because now it could be more dangerous because maybe we can trade the knight in between if we want to. But the important part is, you know, when we have, for example, the pawns right now here, just let's not like over push. Let's be happy and let's improve other pieces. The pawns did their job. Maybe they're going to do more later, but so far this is enough. Um, oh. Um, yeah. I, I was just going to say another reason for it, why you might want to improve the knight as well as like, let's say knight f3 and then Mm -hmm. Yep, so we are really now kind of ignoring the pawns, right? We are happy what they like helped us to get, but suddenly it's time to maybe figure out what to do with these pieces. I'm especially like, thinking about what with the h file. Like if we get, get the rooks there, then that could be also cool. Okay, rook g8, kind of getting ready about the f6, so it was what wouldn't be so that so easy for you to play. Um, and white played king f2. Somebody suggested that before, I remember. Good job, you know, you get one invisible point for that. Um, king f2. So now nothing to do on g file, so black is getting to h file. Rook h8. Rook h1, we are not gonna allow that easily to get there. Rook c g8. Maybe preparing this and just making sure black is not gonna lose also the h file. Mm, queen d1. So there are other moves, like, for example, like, actually maybe like a3 could be interesting move to suddenly play on the b file. But let's just look, you know, kind of only in the way the game continued, just so we understand what's happening. Okay, black is running. Um, queen g1. Then b6, rook h2, maybe preparing now this way to get the h file. Queen e7. Now white played knight b3. So you see all the pieces now are kind of better. Maybe this knight can go there. Also we are putting pressure on this pawn. So if we at some moment decide to move the king, this is also a problem for black. So black has to figure out what to do about it. At some moment, we can play f6 if we want to. So a lot of like threats white has, but nothing specific so far. So knight b3, king c7, seven, seven, king f3. So now this is starting to be serious. We threaten to take the rook, takes, and then take this pawn. Knight d7, defending the pawn, absolutely logical. 
And now, your time to shine. What to do here with white? And when you suggest a move, try to even either suggest like a follow-up move or like tell me what's the idea behind it. And please don't be shy, you know, there are a lot of good ideas. There are some ideas that maybe don't make sense, right? Like knight a1, like who's going to suggest that? So my goal is for you to think about good moves. I always say that I don't think you need to play the best moves in order to improve in chess and to win games. It's just about playing good moves and not just playing horrible moves. So, yep. Um, let's say it's h8 followed by uh, f6 with the idea of bishop takes g7 and then we can, uh, you know, mm -hmm. just do five points. Okay, so let's see. So if we take, take f6 takes because if you take I can recapture with king right mm -hmm. and then okay let's look takes takes here takes 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 and now if you take again the knife like okay this bishop is still horrible I agree with that oh you want to attack this c5 got it what if I, am I going to get some ca counterplay? No, I'm going to lose the rook. Okay, that was not a great suggestion. Hmm. I mean, I wasn't necessarily going to take. On f6. Oh, okay, so you want to take immediately here. Maybe. Okay, let's, let's, let's go back just to get in. So f6. No, I think I have to take. Unless I want to like sacrifice something. No, it doesn't seem doesn't seem real. So takes takes. Sorry, no. Takes first. Take oh. What if I take with let me think. If I take with queen, you take with knight? If I give check, I mean, maybe it's possible. I think we would need to spend serious time now calculating whether it works. I, at first, I felt like you are giving some counterplay to black, which is always something like if I have such a great position and black doesn't have a counterplay, I don't want to give it, even if even for the exchange of getting a little bit better position. But now when I'm looking, and especially because like, right, this bishop and stuff, but now when I'm looking, I think that, I mean, it doesn't seem like black has that much counterplay and the pawn on c5 is a problem. So I'm not fully rejecting your idea. I think it could work. We just need to calculate more. So that's one idea, legit, something else. Carpo was like, I'm not gonna give any counterplay I'm so happy with my pawn, just you know, taking control of everything here, these pieces, just having no space whatsoever. So what is the rook? What is what are people suggesting here? Um, all right, many of you actually. Uh, Td1 is term d1 is rook d1 in German. Okay, rook hd1. HD1, so HD2 probably, and push D6 after sacrifice. Okay, it was probably a different line. Uh, rook D2, some of you want to play to think about capturing here and here. But the key move that actually some of you mentioned, Shailash and I think someone else, A3. Really cool move. So the idea is now that maybe we want to actually reshuffle to the queen side because black got to the king side and it looks like maybe black is you know ready to defend there so now we want to move to king side because we do have some things happening on this and if we can add to that maybe b file or a file together with like knight jumping there 
black is going to be in trouble. And if black will try to reshuffle all the pieces to the queen side, then maybe we can again you know, push some of the pawns on the king side. So I think a3 is a really cool uh, move. And look what happened. Black took rook a2, and now rook h4 takes. Black is doubling rooks, but it's like, OK, all you can do with the rook is to get here, which I don't know how useful is that. Or you can go here, but then we're going to have two rooks for a queen. And together with our pieces, I think the two rooks are going to be much, much better. So rook, rook b1, maybe getting ready for some stuff like knight a5. Black moved back, rook b8. Last move, is it last move of the game? Kind of, last important move in this position. Although there are probably more good moves. But one move that is like, yep, principle of two weaknesses. Like we could talk about the B file being weak and the C5, yep. Yep, good job, James. Queen E1. Queen is the only piece, the last piece that can be improved, right? The knight is pretty much kind of ready to jump there, being happy. Yep, Shailesh also. Queen E1. So we are attacking this rook. And we are threatening to go here. And I mean, anytime we double on this file, that's just really game over. So black decided to kind of, you know, desperation attack here. And then just to like bishop c8 to defend. And queen a5. And this is just kind of lost. So you cannot move the king here because that's discovered attack immediately here. And checkmate. And after rook b6. I'll give you a little bit of time to calculate what to play here. So this game is Karp of Gligorich from 1972. And Gligorich actually resigned after knight a5. But let us calculate what would have followed after rook b6. I think there are more ways also to win. But white to move. So I should make Electron Gligorich best move, so we're going to make up for, for this loss. <laughs> I agree, James. It's a little counterintuitive. But only to the extent, like, when you realize that the pawns on the king side can really, like, just storm in there, then I think that makes more sense. But OK, we talk positional stuff. Now tactics has to kick in. So who can, who can find the best continuation here? Okay, there, okay, there is a pin, there is some future. I don't know if the chat is stuck or you all are writing a whole variation. Okay, Ariane, let's see. Knight takes c5, bishop takes c5, rook takes c6, bishop takes b6, bishop takes b6, knight takes b6, and c5. Actually, that's, that's very correct. That's perfect, perfect calculation. So let's look at that. Knight takes c5. Now, if knight takes, then obviously we take here. I wonder if we take with rook. No, we take, we take with queen. And this is just winning. OK, so they have to take with bishop. Now, I can imagine that many of you may be considered capturing the bishop. But then the queen captures. And like the knight is defending the queen. And the queen is now with the knight and king defending the rook. And everything is safe. So that's why we have to start with rook takes rook. Now, if knight takes, then we are capturing with bishop and getting this guy as well. And if they take with bishop, which seems very lo logical, 
Now we trade the bishop, knight takes, and play c5. Almost four connects, almost. Um, but mainly just getting the knight now. So it's completely winning. So now when we go back completely to this position, I think it's really nice to just think like, okay, first we do this important move c4 to block this guy here and just not allow any counterplay because let's say we start reshuffling our knight. Like if they get to play c4, then like they develop the bishop. Like it's completely different story, right? Suddenly pushing here, maybe doing something there and black is kind of breathing. So that's why we play c4 and then we just prepare the attack. That's not what happened. Knight d7, that's also not what happened because that's helping the knight. Let me find the move that happened. Queen c2. Close the position and then this really cool, I think, knight e2 move and suddenly we go with the pawns. And the rest, I think all of you remember. The critical moment is again, I think somewhere here, where we are very happy with our pawns. Everybody feels that white is better, but just now is the time to slow down and think about other pieces. So what happened was like moving the this, 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 sorry, here, and then at the end actually opening up here. Awesome, okay. What time is it? Do we have time for one more? Yeah, we do, right? No? 10 minutes, or so. Ten minutes yeah. So let's, next game, let's think about this position. So I will tell you that today we are talking about kind of getting space with pawns. So here in this position, again, first we kind of need to like settle in, figure out what's happening and realize that black is pawn up. But for that pawn, white has some developmental advantage, right? The bishops are kind of active, having some potential. The rook is very cool here, and we have two center pawns. Mm -hmm. All right, so you got all that. So now the question is, what to do next? So right now I want you to think about again, two, three move candidates. It's always the same thing with me. <laughs> Nothing too creative. Yep, James suggesting e5 or d5, definitely moves we have to consider. Okay, it's coming. Because this pawn is obviously hanging, right? So e5 makes sense. So now e5, so what is e5 doing? So e5 is blocking this bishop, right? When we push it, this bishop is kind of looking at this pawn, which is not, not that great for it. So. That's good. It also opens up this bishop, right? What is the drawback of e5? What do you think black is going to play after e5? Knight c6. Yep. So we play e5, black responds with knight c6, and now this pawn is a target. And I want to play maybe rook d8 next and just simply capture it. So e5, knight c6, and obviously if you capture this knight, then like your, let's look at that. So my goal is to go here and just put more pressure. And if you decide to do this, then, I mean, you, get up, you give up your advantage of, a, of having a pair of bishops. I'm probably gonna take this way. So I'm, yeah, pawn up. It's not a great pawn, but I'm still happy.
so well if you play d5 to attack the knight then this pawn is not defended and I will just take it so unless we have another move candidate then let's talk about d5 so what is the advantage and what is the disadvantage of d5 Very good. So d5, to even like spell it out, controls this square suddenly, right? Also this. And especially it doesn't allow knight to jump there. So it gets more space because we are suddenly entering the black's camp and we are not allowing the finish of development. The downside is that maybe we are blocking the bishop a bit more. So it's definitely something we have to consider. But if we have to choose between obviously these two moves, then d5 makes more sense. And actually d5 is a pretty good move here. So let's see what happened in the game. So d5, Hikaru developed knight a6, queen e2, finishing development, nothing too fancy, knight c5, e5. Now this is pretty cool. So suddenly this bishop is no longer that blocked we have really strong pawns. And like they're controlling all these squares. Rook a e8. So black is kind of getting ready to, you know, for the for the stuff happening on the king side or kind of in the center. Rook fd1. Not being, you know, overly ambitious about other like pawn pushes, just finishing development f6. Now this is kind of obviously this is like grandmasters playing so some of the moves are not so obvious to to see. Um, like here some people could think about maybe like capturing but obviously this is like very bad because we are opening up the file and getting rid of our kind of connected pawns. So instead there is this quick move very important move bishop e3 but move that I think is kind of hard to see. Rook c8, your time to shine, white to move, what to do next? I mean black's idea is pretty, I mean pretty simple right, we just want to grab this guy. Maybe, I'm not sure actually if it's, that could be a threat also, okay maybe it's not that. Not that simple, but bishop g4 is not definitely possible immediately because then we can we can push if we want to. Yep. Okay, James, James, Edwin, you guys are really strong. Um, queen a2 is a very nice idea, so that's why d6 is actually a super strong move. Good job for everyone thinking about this move. So d6 helps us to open the file whenever we are ready, opens up this diagonal but also opens up this diagonal when, whenever we need it. So really like two exclaim move, d6, very strong. Black played b6 move here. Because if we play e takes d6, queen a2 check, really strong here. And we take this guy. And the problem is that everything is falling apart because now we are threatening to capture this knight for free because this is a this is a pin and we are also threatening to capture here and then take the knight as well. So this is now just very very problematic. So when you can do that when you can take on d6 because of this strong queen a2 I mean you are you are in serious trouble. b6 I think this is your last time to shine in this game. So let's use it. <laughs> what to do here? With white pieces. Because obviously we get the feeling that the pawns are great, our position is good, but now is the time when we need to close on positions that are better, which is a very difficult task.
Okay, so James and so E6. So what's your idea? E6 if I take. Oh, and just blind, blind. Okay, so I can do that. Um, so e6, if I take this way. Yep, exactly. So I think if I go here, I think I can take. I cannot take with the queen as I wanted to, because then there is this bishop d5, really strong pin. So, but we can take probably, I mean, I'm a little afraid, just a little bit, but I think I'm surviving. So yeah. Takes yep, very good. So we do want to push the pawn, but first we just trade back. And obviously we don't like to give up, you know, the pair of bishops, but now we have a direct plan what we want to do. So bishop takes c5, rook takes c5, e6. I mean, look at those pawns. They started here. No, they're both there. That's actually <laughs> you're correct. <Okay. laughs> um, all right, queen c8. No, that's not c8. Queen c8. D takes e7. Because the problem is if you move here, like I'm gonna do the same thing, and then I'm gonna go rook d7. And then I'm just gonna here, and this pawn is just gonna be extremely, extremely strong. And you can really go and like try to take this because, wait, am I, am I gonna go like here? Cause I want to do something here and something there. But let me look at the line so I'm not lying to you. Yeah, okay, so here, and if you now go this way, obviously this is a big problem. And if you capture with queen, I'm gonna go probably, how is this winning? Queen c7. Oh, oh my, thank you, thank you. Today, uh, yeah, just trading, trading bishop d5. That's correct. Okay, so that doesn't work. So black is trying to say, you know, I'm just gonna play here queen c8 and kind of ignore that you have a double pawn. So that's what happens. So uh, queen c8, d takes seven here. No, rook d8, queen takes, pushing even more. And now, this is the moment where still precision is very, very important. So some of you could think about, you know, rook d1 or rook e1. Probably rook d1 makes more sense, but it's the best to start immediately with rook e6 because queen f7 doesn't work. We want to promote. So king has to move. Now we go rook d1. Why not pawn d7? Because this is just winning like kind of in a forceful way. And last move of the game, what did Johannesson plays, played against Hikaru Nakamura in 2002 here? Queen takes c8. Yep, very good. Queen takes c8 and did he resign here actually? Let me see. Uh, no, queen takes c8, rook d8. And now just black resign because there's nothing else to do. So again, when we go all the way back to here, this looks like a you know normal kind of position from Greenfield. White is pawned down, but it's like really cool move d5, just controlling this space, and then pushing with these pawns, bringing you know these pieces here. Suddenly, it feels like it's so natural, like so easy to be grandmaster, right? So easy to make those moves. But sometimes like we like try to push too quickly or something. So like, yes, we want to push with pawns, but then we want to make sure that we are following up with pieces. Now, that's not what we want to do. So we moved back and now this, I mean, moves like d6, that's when like, you know, strategy and tactics, it's important to do both. 
because when you get a strategically good position, that's when tactical threats or tactical motives appear and you need to find them. So I really recommend doing tactics, but it's important to, to know strategy as well, because then you have the thing of like, you know, naturally moving pieces, like moving like Rook FD1. Like you would be like surprised how often like I'm analyzing someone's game and they just never move the Rook from A1. Or they start like, oh, I want to play like G4 and attack there. And then I don't know, Queen is somewhere there and not even like improve. So think about like the pieces to really be more in kind of unison when creating an attack. Here you see it's like rook on files, bishop's ready, queen also. It's hard to find a better spot. Now when the pawn moves, okay, yeah, maybe the queen is better here. But other than that, everything is pretty, pretty perfect. Awesome. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here. By the way, all these examples were from book Mastering Chess Strategy by Johan Helston. I think the book is pretty, pretty fantastic. Um, and it has only like, it's about strategy in chess. So it has a lot of chapters to focus on, you know, specific things. So I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for, you know, suggesting stuff here. I'm always happy when the lecture is kind of interactive and when it's just not me just saying everything, but you guys are participating as well. So thank you so much and see you on Thursday. Bye everyone.